Hey guys, I'm Papa Pete, and welcome back to the next episode of The 125. The 125 is a web-based show that focuses on the 125 different games that were created for the Intel original Intellivision system back between 1979 and 1989. Now, it's a little bit different uh, format in the fact that each episode actually consists of at least two videos. There's going to be the review and history uh, video, which is the one you're seeing right here, and there's also going to be a gameplay video. So, today's game, one that I had when I was a kid, and I had a lot of fun playing, we're going to look at... Boxing. Stick around. Boxing for a Television was released according to the Blue Sky Rangers website on October 21st, 1981. It was produced for Mattel by APH Technological Consulting and the lead programmer was Tom Lowry. Now Tom Lowry is a really prolific programmer. He's done some great games. Boxing was his first, but he went on to do some other ones that we really remember. Sub Hunt and Treasure of Tarman, which he actually did right from start to finish, as well as one of the most memorable games for the Intellivision system, AD&D, the original AD&D, we call it Cloudy Mountain or Crown of Kings. He also went on to work for Activision and created some great games called Dreadnought Factor as well as Worm Whomper. If you're interested in learning more about Tom Lowry, he did two great interviews on the Intellivisionaries podcast. For Dreadnought Factor, he did an interview during episode number six, and for Worm Whomper, it was episode number ten. I'll put links to these two episodes in the comments section down below. Now, Boxy, of course, was released as part of the Sports Network. And like a lot of the different sports games at that time, it was listed as a strictly two-player game. So what's the gameplay like in boxing? Well, like any other boxing game, the object is to protect yourself while you try to punch your opponent, do damage to them, and knock them out. And in a television boxing, each round was 90 seconds, and there was 15 of them. The score count was kept at the top. Every time he landed a punch, he got a point. So the big ways to win were A, to knock down your opponent for a 10 count, B, to knock out your opponent with one big punch, or finally C, which was if you went the entire 15 rounds, it was a pretty long game actually, you would score more points than your opponent. In boxing, each player controlled one of six different boxers, but really there were only five different boxers because Boxer 4 and Boxer 5 were identical. The reason for this is that you could not select, both players could not select the same boxer. So the only way to play where it was perfectly even was for one to take four, one to take five. So as for the different boxers, first of all, there was number one, the red boxer, and he, he was an offensive powerhouse. That was especially, he threw harder punches, but he didn't have quite the defensive ability because that was number two, the blue boxer, who was a defensive specialist. And he could block, he could dodge really quickly, but his punches didn't ha carry quite so much weight when he hit. Next, there was the third boxer, which was sort of tan, and his specialty was endurance. He used to be able to get up, from be after he was knocked down, he used to be able to get up quite a bit more frequently, and he just didn't seem to tire out as quickly by throwing a lot of punches. Now, I've already mentioned boxers number four and five. They're two different shades of green. They're balanced fighters. They're exactly the same, and those are the two that you would pick to have a very, very equal match between both opponents. Finally, there was number six. He was the yellow fighter, and he could be completely random. Maybe you're going to get an absolute hero, the best fighter in the world, and sometimes you're going to get an absolute bum. So you never really knew what you were going to get when you pick fighter number six. The controls in television boxing are what really differentiated it between the other boxing games that were out at the time. The other games that were just sort of a single button, throw a punch, and move it around with a joystick. In television boxing, you had the advantage of being able to use the keypad to make full control of everything about your boxer. You could control your right hand with the buttons that went down the right hand side. You controlled your left hand with the buttons that went down the left hand side. So there was a faint uh, at the very top, then there was a high punch, mid punch, like a jab, and a low punch, gut punch. And by throwing the different hands, you could control the timing and the openings that your other fighter would see. Now, the game disc also did control where the boxer moved in the ring, but the movement wasn't really as pressing as using the hands to try to counter punches. Uh, 
frankly, you would try to move over and force your opponent up against the ropes, but the only other thing you use it for basically to push yourself back off the ropes as well. The real focus is on hitting those buttons on the keypad. Also, the row uh, in the middle did things such as pull punch and uh, duck. So you could do a variety of things with your fighter. It really was quite uh, complicated back at the time. It was by far and away the most complex bo boxing game that had ever been created for a home console at that time. First of all, I want to point out that in, in television boxing, both boxers are right-handed, and you can easily differentiate the right hand from the left hand because the right hand has a hole in it. So when you're looking at the screen right here, you can see it. The hand up top is the right hand, and the hand down below, which is solid, is the left hand. Now, it's also kind of interesting because just like you see them on the screen, the right hand is more or less protecting the upper part of the body, and the left hand is protecting the lower part of the body. Using your different buttons on the keypad, you could throw either one of these hands and you're also watching your opponent to see which hand he's moving because when he throws a punch with either one hand or the other, he's leaving uh, part of himself open up for a counterattack. So in other words, if he's throwing a left hand to the head, well, you could leave your right hand where it is, and that'll protect your head, and you can throw your left hand low into the opening that he just created. And that's the basic strategy that you had for Intellivision Boxing. Now, it got so serious as you could hit combinations by hitting buttons in a hurry, so you could go right to the head, left to the gut, right jab, right jab, and if you got like maybe two punches into it and they were counting real well, you could hit the pull punch button and it would stop the punches that you would already hit. And you also, of course, could hit the duck. And then finally, the faint button that was up top, you could, if your opponent was quite uh, capable of seeing exactly where you're moving your hands, you could throw that quick faint button, like a right hand faint that would go up high. And then when they countered, by throwing to that high one, you could put a left in and the right will go back very quickly and protect you. It was really a pretty good strategy for back in the day. So complex strategy aside, unfortunately, what tends to happen is people don't even pay attention to what the other person is doing. They pick it up to play the game for the very first time and they just mash buttons. And unfortunately, you do have some success with that. The strategy, if you have two players who really know what they're doing, can put a boxing match together that, that, like I said, is quite strategic. But unfortunately, when you don't have that knowledge of the strategy and you just start pounding buttons, that sometimes can be successful too, which is not a very good trait for the game. The graphics of boxing are very simple. Each boxer is one solid color. The colors you mentioned earlier, the fighter you picked according to what different strategy you want to use. From red being the heavy hitter, blue being the defender, tan being the endurance guy, etc, etc. And the most important part about these graphics though is you can very easily differentiate, like I said before, between the left hand and the right hand. Why the right hand has that hole in it. So okay, we've talked about the left hand and the right hand being able to tell those apart, but how about the animations of the boxers themselves? It's got a neat little shuffle as they move back and forth or as they sit there and they just dance around the ring, the legs move a little bit. But most notably is when you get hit with a good punch, very often the boxers will fall down. They, the, at times, they don't go down the whole way, their knees buckle and they sort of go backwards. And then at other times they actually do get knocked down and they go right down and you can see them sort of half sitting up with their arms behind them. And that's when the count comes in. And even more rarely though, is every once in a while you'll get that magic punch and the punch will go up and it will KO the boxer right in one spot. There's no count up or anything. The boxer goes flat down onto the mat and birds actually, there are little stars go around his head. And the, of course the winning boxer puts the arms up and, winner, and the word winner comes across the top. So it's all pretty neat really. The scoreboard up at the top also is quite easy to see because the numbers are in the same color as your fighter. And up top, you'll have the total number of punches that you landed that round. And at the bottom will be the total for the fight. Those are very important because if you do manage to go the entire 15 rounds, and I'm going to tell you it really doesn't happen very often, the biggest number of total punches landed is what's going to win the fight. Now down at the bottom, it's also very simple. In the middle is the clock, which is counting down the time left in that round, and the round number is on the right. The number on the left is 
the knockdown count. So if you get knocked down, that's where it counts up to 10 before your boxer gets up. When you go to get up, it's just completely by the computer. There is uh, nothing that you can do to make it get up. It's just either going to get up or it isn't. So you got to get that out of your mind right now. I know in some games you hit the buttons faster you can get up. That's not the case in Intellivision Boxing. So, are the graphics fancy in Intellivision Boxing? No, not at all. But you can differentiate with the most important thing, which is the right hand for the left hand. And other than that, it does look like a boxing ring and it does look like boxers. And remember, this was 1981. And at the time, it was probably the best graphics out there when you look at some other boxing games that we had at the day. Now the sounds in Intellivision Boxing also, like most games of this day, are very simple. You had a buzzer when the round started or ended, and other than that, as you threw punches, they would make thud uh, as, as they landed on the person or as they banged into the gloves, and the crowd, as punches were landed, would ramp up in intensity right with the fight. As the fight went up in intensity, so did the crowd level. It's really noticeable. Again, very, very simple. But for that day and age, it was very, very effective. I call the sounds in Intellivision Boxing really quite good. Like I said before, boxing was a game that we had when I was a kid. And like most of the two-player games, I didn't always have somebody that I could play it against. So I used to find that I'd just, like I say, play with it, control it each hand, and try counter punches, try different things, see about uh, keeping things even, go entire periods, entire fights, uh, all kinds of different things. We used to try to go for knockouts, and even once, just once, that I remember when I was a kid, there's something called the double knockout, and it's extremely, extremely rare. You might find a couple pictures of them online, but there aren't very many. And what it is, is when you have that big one-punch knockout, but both players throw the punch at exactly the right time. They both get hit, and they both get down and get knocked out flat with birds around their head. And like I said, extremely, extremely rare. Okay, all this being said, you know, obviously, nine times out of ten I wanted to play this game. I didn't have somebody around to play it with. So, when I occasionally when I did, of course, I'd try to apply the strategies because I'd read the book. I knew how to make it work. And the person I was playing against wouldn't necessarily do it, and they just basically mashed the buttons. And unfortunately, the game design really wasn't refined enough that you probably have just as much success by mashing on the buttons as trying to apply the strategy. And that really doesn't make for a very good game. Now, with all this in mind, the graphics were decent, and the sound actually was pretty good, but... The fact that you weren't rewarded uh, for applying these strategies, there was no real incentive for learning the game. Very few people ever did so. And most people who just sort of picked it up and played it like that without really wanting to apply the strategies or learn how to play the game in the way they wanted you to, found it redundant and frankly a little bit boring. All of these things into consideration, I do think there is a little bit of fun to be had here. So I'm going to give Boxing for Intellivision a 5 out of 10 rating. Thanks for joining me today on the 125 for Intellivision Boxing. If you have any comments or memories of playing in television boxing when you were young or even recently, please be sure to uh, share them in the comment section down below. While you're there, make sure you hit that like button if you would. And, you know, if you really want to, please subscribe to my channel. Anyway, guys, I can't wait till I come back for the next episode of the 125. But until then, take care. Papa Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age.